So for the past year, it seems like some of Logan Paul's worst nightmares have now starting to come true. Not only was his uh, little brother the 37th highest paid athlete in the world, but now he's also seen as the fighter and the tougher one in the family. And on top of that, his ex-co-host and ex-best friend, George Janko, has been absolutely crushing it and has arguably now a better show than Logan Paul. Now, we did talk about this before, but now it's even more clear that the show's quality and the effort that they used to put into the show has gotten through the floor and it's not what it used to be. And it seems like uh, Mike Milagelak is the only one that's fully aware of that, while um, Logan Paul is in complete denial and instead of trying to fix it and working on it, he completely exposed himself when he started trashing his own brother again, showing that he actually wasn't happy with all of his success and the fact that he was way better than him at something because just a few days ago on the last episode of impulsive logan paul actually started taking shots at jake and giving the most backhanded compliments ever while the person that jake hates the most which is ksi was trashing him and what's more interesting is that they actually deleted that part from the original episode which uh, now you can see that there's a nasty cut um, where they took that out, which naturally brings up a lot of questions. And similar to the last uh, viral argument when they got into a huge fight, it's really, it really falls on Logan Paul. And once again, it shows his true colors and the reason why a lot of people dislike him. No, and nobody's turning that down to make money and fight well, the greatest boxer of all time. Apparently somebody is. Your, your brother actually today said that, <laughs> is that true that he, he said oh. on his podcast that he turned down the offer from Mike Tyson before you? So, yeah, like th that situation is always tough for me because I hate that my brother and I's relationship sometimes has to be like aired out. But it seems as if the court of public opinion is the only thing that like steers him in the right direction. But it is weird to lie, to blatantly just lie. That was never online. even a thing. Me and Nikisa and Most Valuable Promotions curated a deal with Netflix. We signed a deal with Netflix, and our goal was to go get another fighter to fight me. And the, there was tiers of three tiers, A, B, and C. An A-level fighter, we would get this much money. A B-level fighter, we would get this much money. A C-level fighter, we would get this much money. So we were the ones that brought the Netflix deal to Tyson and he was an A-level fighter. So Tyson was never in the market offering people the fights for anyone to turn down. So yes, it is weird to go online and lie. I don't um I don't like that either. I don't like the relationship you guys have on the internet, if that makes sense. What I've what I've seen. Yeah. I think it's I don't I like it either. Weird. Yeah. I, I just I am always having to defend myself and be undermined and be like tr like little broad and then I have to just not allow it to happen. But I'm, ne yeah. I'm never, I'm just like taking shots and then I have to like explain because I get thrown yeah, into it's it. It's kind of weird. I mean, you know, that's that's your relationship you have with him. I don't want to overstep, but you know, I'm just telling you from what it looks like from an outer perspective, it just doesn't feel like you and Logan are brothers on the internet. And once again, this is wild because five years ago, nobody would have expected Jake Paul to be the more mature one out of the two brothers. It's pretty insane. And the fact that he said what he said, I mean, he's essentially saying that Logan Paul's ego is so big and that he's so delusional that he can't, re you can't really tell him anything until he hears what everybody has to say about him, which is actually insane. I mean, that was a huge thing that people would criticize Logan Paul for, which was that he was essentially a grifter and would just go with whatever the popular opinion was at the time. And I mean, hearing his own brother, Jake, say that it's so wild. And now looking back, you can clearly see a pattern of him doing or saying something completely dumb, apologizing for it, uh, posting it online, and then doing it again. And I mean, it's now gotten to a point where his own brother, Jake Paul, is actually calling him uh, spineless and a liar, essentially, which I think is pretty fair. I mean, if I saw my own brother allowing somebody else to trash me on their show, I feel like I would probably respond in a similar way. Now, keep in mind that KSI was trashing a product that Jake Paul is selling, which is, again, it's fair. But wouldn't it also be fair for Jake to start trashing prime you know the product that uh ksi is pushing and, and if logan never said anything he could simply hide behind the excuse that he's not trashing him he's trashing ksi so it's a whole different thing and bro for both mike and jake the bag like at what at what point you can't i don't know if you could say no has there been any videos that have come out now this next part is what was taken out of that episode both mike and jake the bag like at what at what point you can't i don't know if you could say no 
I said no to fighting Mike Tyson. I'd say no. I was I was offered it. And you I, guys offered. Yeah, I was offered it, but not on Netflix, and not for a big ass bag. Yeah. It was just like a. It was just like a, oh, this could be a real fight because I I've been asked before. I'm sure you have too. Do you think you could beat Mike Tyson? And my answer was and will be. Yes. Well, yeah. I just think, I what, just think now? Yes, I just think he's too old, bro. That's oh, crazy. Oh, God, he's God, senile. The thing is, he'd be great hey, for a round, maybe. Yeah. It's kind of like, in my well, opinion, that's bro, I, on you in a little bit. Exactly. Know. Exa it is. And, yeah. and then it's like, why is someone, my own brother, trying to make me look like the second option for Tyson? Like, oh, yeah, I turned down that. De no, you didn't. That's a complete lie. Like, and why are you it's fabricating the, lies? It's the big brother syndrome. Oh, and then it's always here yeah. once again that was a part that was actually cut out from the original episode which is very interesting for multiple reasons i mean you would think that somebody as big as logan paul that has a massive team would know that if you take something out that you previously said especially on a podcast you know it, it just draws a lot more attention to it especially when it's about something that you have been previously criticized for you know taking shots at your own brother while sitting down with uh, somebody that hates him and also it wasn't that long ago that both jake and uh, logan paul had that heated argument that was pretty intense on the show which uh in which jake paul actually exposed how fake logan paul was even when it comes to his own family because at that point back then jake was essentially at the peak of his career he had just boxed uh, nate diaz and did a did very well and was definitely and i mean still is the face of uh influence influencer boxing and uh logan paul was definitely not happy about that because every single time that he was on he wanted to interject himself into the whole event and the whole situation and make it all about himself basically saying that jake paul sniped the nate diaz fight from him which is <laughs> which is insane um saying that he wanted to fight tommy fury and now saying that he was the one that turned down the mike tyson fight i mean that's absolutely insane and on top of that to say that it's somewhat memeable. I mean, once again, that's clearly a backhanded compliment. Like, hey, little brother, I'm happy for you that you're about to make a lot of money and be the first uh, sports event, live sports event on Netflix, even though most people might think that you're a joke. Like, what? And also, another thing that is very, very interesting is how whenever Jake Paul would uh, try to trash KSI in front of uh, Logan Paul, Logan would, al would always try to defend KSI in some sort of way but whenever it's the other way around, whenever it's KSI trashing Jake Paul in front of uh, Logan, Logan essentially just sits back and enjoys the show. People are like, yo, this is like inauthentic anymore. You're just trying to like take away from this kid and like you're just clearly saying this sh and you're 30 years old and acting like this with your ego and making everything about discrediting this person. It's like, all right, dude, you know, grow up. It really I feel bad for him. I, I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, like not saying it in a talking shit way, I feel bad for him. I think he's a sorry, miserable, un insecure, unhappy person. He's not. I, I think he is deep down. And, and you know better than everyone, bro, that anyone can put on a facade and go about their lives and be in a terrible spot and a terrible position. To, to be that insecure and miserable at 30 years old to, to try and do these things like oh, I, can i can i play this real it's quick sad. Oh, it's no, genuinely can I, sad can i just play this clip just so i don't get out of context here? so you know it, it is what it is and at the end of the day like i just don't think he's a he's a good person damn I, just i gotta i don't know him to the fucking heart you know i i, I i've spent some time with you spent a bunch of time with him i don't i don't I don't get that impression, having spent time around him. I'm sure I don't you don't either, obviously, because you wouldn't be in a f business with him if that was the case. No, no, I, I, I have to, I have to strongly disagree. You don't know him, and and just like he doesn't know you. And I've said this before, bro. KSI is not JJ. In my head, those are like two different, two different things, two different entities. Like JJ, the person is is he is very different. Is not. Though. KSI the internet and once again if you're Jake Paul and truly dislike somebody that much if you dislike KSI that much it must be pretty hard uh listening to your own brother essentially bent over backwards trying to defend that person when you clearly know why you don't like him and look I truly don't know if KSI is a good or bad person um obviously he's massive he's huge out there but Jake Paul's argument is actually pretty solid I mean why is KSI Logan Paul's partner openly trashing him and undermining every single thing he does 
And Logan's answer is uh, to say, well, you actually don't know him and, he, and he's essentially playing a character. And also Mike Melagy like trying to say that KSI must be a good person. Otherwise, Logan Paul wouldn't be in business with him is absolutely insane. It's comical. I mean, literally the only reason, according to Logan Paul, the only reason why CryptoZoo went down the way it did was because of the people that he was in business with and not in and not necessarily because of him. So basically both Mike and Logan are trying to defend someone who's actively trashing Jake Paul, which is not that bad. I mean, it's not the end of the world. And I think uh, Jake's answer was definitely on point because everything that he said could actually be applied to Logan Paul. You know, the whole the whole thing about the older one trashing the younger guy for no reason or maybe because they're potentially insecure or unhappy with their life i mean i think that was pretty accurate and look jay paul is just a little bit older than me so i've known about him ever since the vine days but um I, the only times that i really saw their content was when other people like h3 h3 back then would make fun of them would make fun of jake paul and logan paul and on this channel we have been covering them for almost two years now so it's very clear to me uh, that for Logan Paul to do those things, those type of things now that he's supposed to be a changed, a whole different person, a changed man shows that he actually didn't really change or at the very least, not as much or nearly as much as Jake Paul has. Oh, and by the way, if you like what you're seeing so far, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps out so much. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. I don't understand. His name is on the poster. It says Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. And also, I don't think I look like Jake. I got no tattoos and I don't have that thick beard. Mm. But I'm sure you have some opinions about Jake Paul. <laughs> <my taste. laughs> um, <laughs> oh, man. I honestly, I just think it's sad, bro. I think it's super sad. I don't know why Jake took it. It's a lose-lose. Literally, he knocks out Mike Tyson and he's being what? Uh, an, uh, 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 an OAP. <laughs> what, is that? what does that what mean? Old age pet. <laughs> old age pension <laughs> my yeah. Tyson is 57 years old yeah. like yes in his prime this would have been crazy but now it's like oh this is just sad it's Mike Tyson anything can happen you get so many people watching like millions and millions everyone's gonna know him as the guy that knocked out an old <sighs> it, it, Mike Tyson. well I don't think I don't think he's gonna knock him out I will say but imagine I, he gets knocked out by Mike Tyson then. that that would suck. Well, yeah, but <laughs> that would suck. Ha that, okay, so that's any? where it's a lose-lose. Yeah. But the win would be the fact that it's on Netflix, yes, one of the yeah, first yeah, live but, sporting yeah. events. No matter what you think, Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson, at least like on paper, mm. is interesting. And people will watch I mean, it and the they can't every, complain because yeah, it's every, free. Yeah, it's everyone free. is going to watch it. It's but, free on Netflix. What are you going to say? Know, oh, like, you I guess because like legacy is my thing. Like. I just feel <laughs> like for Jake Paul, his legacy is going to be, ah, oh, he can knock out old people. For now, maybe that is a little true and might be the narrative. Mm. He'll, he'll have to weather the haters for a little bit, yeah. you know, because I mean, bro, it is like slightly roastable. And mm. I, I, for the record, think that if they're like fully going out, I think Jake would win. I think yeah, well, I think you would win as well. Well, I, I mean that's what I mean. Like fam, I noticed it with Floyd. He it, yeah. it, like I'm like a proper YouTuber boxer. Yeah. And yeah. when I was in the ring with 50 and old Floyd Mayweather, mm, mm. I noticed his age. Yeah. He's, <laughs> how, wait, how old was he? He was 44, dude. And huffing and puffing by round eight. I was like warming up. And once again, it is really shocking how Logan Paul or someone from his team actually thought that it was a good idea to remove that part when he was talking about turning down the Mike Tyson fight probably because it was a lie, according to Jake Paul. Um, but they also kept all the other times that uh, both KSI and Jake Paul were taking shots at Jake, uh, at his brother. For example, Logan saying to KSI that he actually believes that Jake can beat Mike Tyson. That's a positive thing. But to also say that he also believes that KSI can uh, beat Mike Tyson is such a backhanded compliment. I mean, we all clearly saw both of uh, Jake and KSI's performance against Tommy Fury and there's no denying who who was better. So clearly that comment was implying that either Mike Tyson was an easy opponent or that Jake Paul is not that much better than KSI and they're both the same thing. And on top of that, Logan Paul saying that he felt how tired Floyd Mayweather was at the uh, towards the final rounds and how Logan was just getting started. That's completely delusional. And again, that's taking shots for no reason because essentially what he's saying is that if he fought Mayweather, who was 45 and felt that he was... Uh, 
you know, he was getting tired and out of stamina very quickly, then what would you expect? With, what would you expect from a fighter that is 10 years older? You know, with Mike Tyson clearly hinting towards uh, Jake Paul fighting somebody with no stamina. That's clearly what it was. And funny enough, he actually did something very similar with George Jenko, his uh, ex best friend and ex co host, because back when George left the show, Logan wasn't the nicest and he was making a lot of uh, backhanded compliments saying that uh, George was, was doing very well and that a lot of people do well when they leave Impulsive and start trashing uh, Logan Paul, basically saying that he's getting views because he's attacking Logan Paul. And at some point on another episode, he actually made fun of how little views George was getting and now he's completely crushing it. I saw George. No, oh, well, I saw Jesus, but I also saw George. Today? Uh... Wait, should I talk about? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I saw George on an airplane. Really? Yeah. For real? Yeah, I was I was getting loaded up to come here the other day, and uh, I was just sitting in my seat, and I was like locked in. I had my headphones in, and I was on my phone, and you know, I'll look up every once in a while. I was like, people are passing by, and I looked up, and there he was, bro, <laughs> <laughs> a bearded, you know, a bearded George, a Syrian man. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want to talk about it too much because it's. It, it, I, I. I would hope that a portion of it will be used for us to all fix. Not. Not that there's Spencer anything to and fix, I are going to have that. We're, Spencer and I are going to go out and have a podcast with George. I mean, it's a great we're going to do our three. Uh, yeah, George, hit us up. <laughs> George, George, if you're watching yeah. this, just, like, just let's do it. It's, it would break the internet because everybody hates these guys. <laughs> I can't wait and to hear George's guys. Guys. exact, yeah. exact. Yeah. No, you said it earlier. Interpretation of how that interacts. No, he yeah, George is no. gonna be like, we were on our way out. Dude, I tried to punch him in the face. And obviously, now the whole George situation is one of the most interesting ones in recent time. Now, to be honest, back when George had his first meltdown and walked out of the uh, Bobby Lee episode, it did make me think negatively of him. Um, you know, it wasn't the it wasn't the best move, regardless of what the situation was. But after he left and he started and he started uh, talking about why or hinting towards why he left and uh, you know making it clear that Logan Paul wasn't the best uh, part business partner or the best friend to be with and he was essentially forced to make that decision to leave you know i started to change my mind and i can definitely respect that and i definitely never thought that george would be where he's at now i mean now he's absolutely massive because if you think about it the idea of uh, leaving a show to start your own podcast it's you know it's a brave move and it's super risky and you know it actually paid off and what's funny now is that the people that actually stayed loyal to Logan and are now on the show are sitting there joking around about how much they want to do George's podcast because he's so big. And and while they're sitting there next to Logan Paul suffering because, you know, Logan Paul now has completely moved on and doesn't really need the show or any of them, honestly. And also when Mike Melagelag brought up the fact that he saw George Jenko in person, the only thing that Logan Paul said was negative he basically said that while mike believes that it was a positive interaction he uh logan paul thinks that george doesn't feel the same way so i mean he has no reason to believe that but he just in his head thinks that uh george hates them i'm for that pivot uh andrew tate interview <laughs> man <laughs> i love you so much love you, man. we're definitely going to talk off camera when these guys aren't around uh right. okay andrew tate please go yeah man ultra viral Yes. Unbelievably viral. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I think everybody probably saw the interview, but what was the whole experience like going out there? How did it come about, and, and what was that all like? Uh, weird story with that. Yeah. And I actually have it uh, recorded, too, which I'm actually very excited about. After the pivot off of Impulsive, I was in a state of uh, fear. I just didn't know where to take things, and I didn't know what to do. And so I prayed, and I said, God, like, where do you want me to go? And... The reason I'm not upset with Logan or Mike anymore is because I had a lot of learning to do. I had to grow up. I had to learn how to deal with things I didn't know how to deal with. And I learned a lot through that obstacle. So to be honest, like, I thank God every day for what happened. And look, I'm sure we can all agree that George walking out of that episode wasn't the best move. It was just completely unprofessional. And there is no excuse for that. However, now that we know what we know and knowing how Logan Paul is, even with his own family... You know, I understand why he did it and I don't really and I don't blame him that much. I'm sure he would also agree that looking back, it wasn't the best thing to do. But once again, 
completely understandable. And even though I'm still not the biggest Jake Paul fan or George Jenko fan, not in a bad way, I just simply don't uh, go out of my way to watch or uh, consume their content. I feel like I might give them a chance because there is no way that I'm watching Impulsive anymore. I mean, again, not only is the, the show's quality through the floor, it's, they, they clearly don't care about the show, but now knowing that the whole time Logan Paul was essentially just putting up an act and was being fake, even to his own brother. And in my opinion, there is no reason to keep watching that show. I mean, there's no value. Um, it, it used to be a good show because not only were you able to see Logan Paul's redemption arc and seeing how and see how someone can actually change, which now that's deba debatable, but uh, they also did have access to a lot of good guests. The show was massive. And, uh, you know, Logan Paul, like him or hate him, is a good entertainer. And um, he was deeply involved and entrenched in all the internet and YouTube culture so it was a good show but now i don't i don't see the point of it not only is the quality uh not existent but again the friendship and the dynamic of the show is not even there anymore and also logan paul now is a full-time uh, pro wrestler which if you if you're into that then that's that's great for you but if you're not then you know but yeah let me know what you think in the comments below leave a like and subscribe to support the channel dislike if you didn't like the video but that is all we have for today. See ya.